Good day everyone and welcome to Obi Dati Family TV. The program now hope our life. Yes, hope day. As we the Supreme Court today, hope day. Now God, now everybody they call today. So we'll go see the talk again, hope day. So wherever now they join us from on a good morning, afternoon and evening, we won't bring on a quickly the updates of waiting happen for Supreme Court today. Because different things they happen different areas first of all if we look at the uh, this morning to enter supreme court people go pass through moto where they put gadgets inside i don't know whether supreme court they expect whether boko around one pass we know no sure but we see say now through moto people go pass and go scan them then go pass before anything go happen and for outside the premises We'll be said before I even try to enter inside that one now. We get our own UC mark, so we'll be say in there, there maybe forgive us update for there. But uh, as soon as I see to even work out enter, then don't already prioritize the people. We'll be say then go work out enter. And as we don't work out enter, can't see waiting how the courtrooms, how the inside take be. Uh, even before the justices before uh, begin their coming, we see say different things will happen today. Whether they prepare to give to rule or give the judgment today, nobody know. But God fell them, sure. It be like say they take hints, make them for first of all receive that very particular motion where Atiku Abubaka face uh, talk before then go begin to talk about the judgment because the kind smile where then they smile and the kind hug where APC chief then they hug themselves for inside there it be like saying that today the matter won't end when I they see those ones I talk say show today not today so we get plenty of things where we say it happen for Supreme Court where we won't talk today and not be only me won't talk this thing especially the one where we say uh, Justice Okoro uh, talk say later as they come out from Chicago State University, you go discuss that one. Enter it talk say whether no be letter in go take whether in go take the position. In no no Kai. Anyway, no be only me go discuss these things. I get Angel for studio. I get Esther for studio, and I get our own princess. Say don't give the Good day, my way meaning Nigerians, my lovely and intelligent obedient worldwide. Welcome, tell your neighbor, say hope day. Happy new week, my people. When I don't hear justice in Angokoro say he doesn't even know which one to accept between the letter from Chicago State University and the deposition done on that oath. When I go see another technicalities one setting, we go hit justice in Angokoro so hard. We no go leave her like we let uh, Justice Samani go free. We go hit her so hard that he go no say na constitution na he go follow. No be technicalities. Welcome on board. Let's discuss. Yes, yeah, so good day, obedient and women in Nigeria. So now welcome. It's hope alive life o'clock. My people against all odds, I strongly believe and still believe that the Supreme Court will do the right thing. I believe that they're going to save this nation and I, get, I believe that they are going to prove that not every Nigerian, not every justice in the Nigerian judiciary is corrupt and save this country from sliding into the mud. Welcome on this discussion and join us. Good day, well-meaning Nigerians and my fellow obedient worldwide. Welcome back to Hope Alive. Another hilarious thing that happened today was INEC desperately begging Supreme Court to reject Atiku's um, request to submit Tinibu's uh, academic records. In a sane society, those people are never supposed to be seen in the sky. <laughs> well, join us as we discuss. Yes, yeah, so make on join us to discuss this thing because in plenty, I should talk. What in consign INEC, consign motion uh, for new evidence? That new evidence, a consign INEC, Make on our help us. We're gonna go comment section. Make on for tell us whether this very particular evidence where Atiku carry come to disqualify to Tunubu for sake of a uh, certificate uh, forgery, whether it concern INEC. As we know, INEC no do their due diligence. I be as then talk, say law, no, no permit them or tell them make them go do uh, due diligence. Then they no check. So instead of them will be then they call them independent, made them there outside of the discussion. 
then begin the join discussion, say, may they come out, uh, may they no look the side of the motion, or may they not accept that particular new evidence. It in the it depend us when we they hear the name Mahmoud Yakub. Any child where you just talk Mahmoud Yakub, you go just talk quick, you go say who talk that thing. Then go even beat you if you come out anywhere, begin the shout Mahmoud Yakub. Because I shall say everybody where this where the streets, where here where they talk say Mahmoud Yakub, everybody go come out to begin the pursue the thing. So if you won't give your picky name, no try. Mahmoud Yakub, it no go work because you go stay for a long time. So make we come back to the major discussion where we get today, and that discussion we won't start uh, with the things as it take happen for COP today. The update of how the thing take happen, and when we finish this uh, update of what it happened for court, we will come enter for that thing where Justice Iyang uh, Okoro how intake talk say first of all. The information as they take come out from court now with the brain come. So if in talk say uh, the letter where they come out from CSU, they it say day two. Say one, they talk say uh, Tulubu certificate, they authentic. Say another one, they talk say say they they conflicting. Conflicting me say it day two. Uh, two letters. But what you go provide and go show on two letters and the positions from Chicago State University, we go show on say, no letter come out from Chicago State University where they authenticate Tulubu certificate and we no get any letter where they come out there where they talk say, you know, they authenticate. So I know where we are, Justin e and Okoro getting letter. If now waiting in talk for court, so, but before we get to that very point, we will show now all these things. Make we go to the major updates of how the court take waka today because it start with APM case. APM don't uh, jump uh, fence. They jump fence for Supreme Court. That one no uh, bother us more. But make we start with um, this one now. NJ, make you lead us for waiting start for this thing. They say Chris. Uh, or Chris Uche San, start Spring, something. Spring Court update. Chris Uche San for Atiku said the appeals arrived for hearing. He said there are some pending interrogatory applications and moves a motion filed on 6 October 2023. He seeks for five minutes um, adumbration of the application. They are praying for an order of leave to present fresh evidence on appeal based on the deposition on oath from Chicago State University. He said the application is predicted on 20 grants and an affidavit of 20 paragraphs filed on behalf of Atiku. Okay, uh, that very one, uh, as uh, Angel, don't give us now. So then take start that very court. So make I continue from um, here. So he went on to say upon the receipt of counter affidavit from Mr. Tinubu, APC, and INEC, they filed a written address dated 18th October. He adopts the application and urged the court to grant their request. Now, Chris Uche also said the issue involving Tinubu certificate is a weighty, grave, and constitutional one. With the Supreme Court, he urged the court to admit the fresh evidence of um, Tinubu's academic records from CSU presented by Atiku. He said the Supreme Court has a duty to take a look at Mr. Tinubu's records and reach a decision devoid of technicality. Now, the, uh, the justice will be saying they preside the matter as we know now, John Ian Okoro. Now, ask um, the, the Chris Uche San whether the Supreme Court should rely on the Electoral Act for the Constitution. Now, in his response, Chris Uche San says the issue about Mr. Tinubu's certificate is a constitutional matter which the court should look into. A member of the panel, which is a member of the panel that is a justice of the Supreme Court, Emmanuel Agim, asked Chris Uche to explain the nature of Article's fresh documents he seeks to tender before the Supreme Court. Now, Justice Emmanuel Agim asks whether the testimony by CSU registrar was conducted in court. 
And then Justice Emmanuel Agim continues, says from Chris Uchesan's court filings, the testimony by the CSU registrar held in Articles Lawyers Law Office in the U.S. Now, Justice Agim says the CSU did not issue any letter discrediting Mr. Tinubu's certificate. That is coming from Justice Agim. Now, he said, we are dealing with a matter that touches on the national unity of Nigeria, the justice also says. Now, Justice Okoro, who is the, the head or the chairman of this panel, he said he seeks clarification from Articles lawyer, Chris Uche. Justice Okoro asked Mr. Chris Uche on why he wants the Supreme Court to brush aside constitutional provisions and entertain the fresh evidence. Now, Chris Uche San explained that Section 233 of the Constitution gives the Supreme Court the power to entertain questions about whether a person has been properly elected. And he continued, Chris Uche responded to the issue raised about the CSU proceedings. And in quote, there is a slight distinction between proceedings in the U.S. and the U.K., in the U.S., that is, that is how court proceedings are done. Mr. Tunubu was represented by a U.S. lawyer, but he did not object to the proceedings being held in Article Lawyer's law office. This is him responding to why they have to take that deposition outside of the court premises. Chris Uche said, the depositions are more effective than letters from the CSU authorities regarding the authenticity of Mr. Tinubu's academic records. Justice Okoro says, criminal matters has to be proved beyond reasonable doubt, but in this case, there are two conflicting letters from the CSU. One authenticating the pres president's certificate and another discrediting it. Who do we rely on? He asked. This very particular thing is our core discussion point as we finish from what has transpired in court before we, we, we go into that. But I need us at this very point to understand that this very um, saying or this exclamation or quote from Justice um, Iyeng Okoro is where we are going to have our basic discussion. Now, let me continue with uh, what we have on the screen. So, Chris Uche refers to the court to a letter earlier issued to Michael Enahoro Eba, a lawyer who testified for Atiku against Mr. Tinubu at the presidential election petition court in Abuja. Then, INEC lawyer Abubakar Mohamud San asked the Supreme Court to dismiss Atiku's application seeking to tender Ms. Tinubu's academic record. You can imagine. Then we now have Wole Olani Pekun San, who appealed to the Supreme Court to dismiss this very, I want, in a quote, dismiss this very unusual application seeking to tender fresh evidence against Mr. Tinubu. He said the fresh evidence is not admissible. Olani Pekun argued that the CSU depositions are dormant until the deponent comes to court and testify. INEC should have been a party at the deposition proceedings in the U.S., the Harrow Web um, says. The question of 180 days, which is the statutory period within which an election petition should be filed and determined is clear. It is sacrotans can be shifted. That is his position. Therefore, Article cannot seek to tender fresh evidence at the Supreme Court. This is coming from um, Olani Pekun. Now, we have a Wola uh, Olani Pekun San, that is the person who is representing uh, Bart and um, Shetima, said, Articles Fresh Evidence is an application in Wonderland and has no merit. He urged the Supreme Court to dismiss it, stating that the court is bound by the law and the law must be interpreted as it is. Now, now the degree says it should be interpreted as it is, not in Abuja, 25%. But let me continue. 
Akin Olajumi San for APC added that the application not only lacks merit but is misconceived. He also urged the court to dismiss it. He went on to say, in quote, you cannot smuggle in documents at the Supreme Court without first tendering same at the trial. That is the appeal, appellate court, the tribunal. And the court, um, Justice Okoro asked what should be done with the fresh evidence. And Oluji Misan for APC said, the burden is on articles lawyers to prove beyond a reasonable doubt why the Supreme Court should admit fresh evidence. Chris Uche-san, for article, said the position should be admissible in court. Olani Pekun jokingly pointed out some contradiction in article's prayers where he prayed the court to disqualify Tinubu in one breath, in the other called for a reward between him and Tinubu. The court allowed the appeal and set aside judgment. Now, this is where the court uh, went on um, recess and um, they scheduled uh, for, to come back. So, as they come back, uh, they were able to deal with the other things because this very particular one has to deal exclusively with um, what transpired between Atiku and um, uh, that is Atiku and Chinubu, because earlier on before then, they had dismissed the APM. appeal filed by the APA. Now, I know um, we'll be coming to uh, Maxwell, who we analyze all of these things, but let's get back to, after the recess from court, what actually transpired. But remember that we are coming back to talk other things that pertains to uh, Justice Okoro's assertions. Now, the seven-man panel of the Supreme Court, led by Justice John Okoro, has reserved judgment in the appeal of Atiku Abubakar and the PDP after hearing the arguments of the counsels. Justice Okoro said a date will be communicated to lawyers when the judgment is ready. Now, the APM has withdrawn its appeal challenging Tinubu's election, as we already know. So, vi victory after the Supreme Court chastised APM's counsel for bringing a frivolous appeal on an issue already decided by the Supreme Court. The court will now hear that of uh, Peter Obi and the Labour Party. And that is where we will stop for now. We'll come back to you on the updates from the court. But first, let us go to the issues uh, that are before us this evening concerning uh, the assertion of um, the justice, the lead chairman of this panel, which is Justice Ian Okoro. And what we want to talk about is his understanding of uh, the letters that are authenticating Bola Tinubu's certificate. And another letter he said the Supreme Court has that is not authenticating uh, the, the Mr. Tinubu's um, certificate. Now, what we know at Obidati Family TV is that we have followed this case from a month back. And we have been uh, chasing after all the facts and the truth. And we have been able to find, and even after these assertions of today, we have gone into our archive to check whether there are letters that were sent out from uh, the Chicago State University concerning Tinubu certificates. And there is absolutely none. There is no letter coming out from the CSU that we know of that suggests that there is, uh, 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 that is authenticating either Tinubu's uh, um, certificate or even disproving the certificate that is with INEC. There is no such letter. That's one. Then if Justice Ian Okoro's assertion are whether they should take the deposition of the court, or, or uh, the deposition done by the CSU registrar, or that they should rely on the letters that come out from the CSU, your guess is as good as mine. But joining us to have these discussions, we have UC Maxwell on Zoom, who is joining us to, you know, to lay more light on what happened in Supreme Court because he was at Supreme Court today and then to also explain about what 
the assertions of Justice uh, Iyang Okoro today suggesting that there are, there are documents coming out from um, CSU. So, uh, Mr. Maxwell, welcome to the show. But before you commence, I want to inform you that we have the deposition uh, document we want to show where this document in question was actually projected. I think it's in CSU uh, deposition uh, page 42 and 43 thereabouts. But we'll bring it. But we want to hear your analysis of what happened in court from the outside to the inside of today and also what you think about the justice um, uh, proclamation of these things. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, so um, I think um, Maxwell is uh, having have to unmute. As he unmutes, he will uh, join up. So let's get back to studio. So, okay, okay, okay I can hear you now. Please uh, do. Uh, let's start. Our audience are really expecting you to tell us what happened in Supreme Court today. I, what? Here is what. The other one is wrong. That is and. Uh, Okay, why we uh, wait for for him to join us? Let's get back. Sorry, sir. What are you saying, sir? So sorry, sir. What are you saying? Uh, we are we are we are live on Obidati Family TV, and we're expecting you to give us updates on what happened from the courts, uh, from the outside to the premises, and um, also uh, the assertions from John A. and Okoro, the chairman of the panel, who stated that uh, there is two conflicting documents coming out from the court. But um, let's start with uh, what happened, transpired in court, as you people get to the Supreme Court today. All right. Thank you very, thank you very much. Now, the, the, thank you for having me, Mr. Kano. Good evening to everybody that is listening. The fact is that the issues that are before the Supreme Court are germane. But before I come to the issues that are before the Supreme Court, Today, we saw a case or an appeal of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, which was lodged by the three parties, APM, um, Peter Obi and Labour Party, and then Atiku and the PDP. Now, when I got to, because I was on ground, when I got to the court premises as early as 6 a.m. this morning, there was heavy security presence and there was, you know, restriction, heavy restriction from people you know, going into the courts, they had to create some sort of accreditation list, which I had a lot of challenges with. It's unfortunate that in this time and day, we still have to go through all this rigorous process, which puts in the minds of the people that the court is not ready to do justice. And that is the fact. How does a person go to court and you begin to mention an accreditation list? The truth is, the courtroom should be open to everybody. Anybody who gains entry into the courtroom and the courtroom becomes full, then you tell people to go back that the courtroom is full. Not the case of creating some kind of list. So there was DSS present, there was the police, there was the military present, just because there is a petition or an appeal of a presidential election petition before the Supreme Court. So these are the issues. For myself, I was also harassed today by operatives of the DSS just because I was, you know, covering the events of, of the court session today. So these are the problems that we are facing. Remember that we just celebrated three years of the NSAS memorial. If we still have to go through all these kinds of processes, then it tells a lot about our desire to entrench democracy in Nigeria. Going into the substance of the case today, I'll be careful to speak about the issues that are already before the Supreme Court. But then, I must state some things that are factual, which are um, deducible from the case which came up or from the deposition of Chicago State University. One of it is very simple, that Chicago State University agreed to the fact that before them, before them was a certificate. That certificate that they showed to Chicago State University for which they made a deposition to that effect they denied issuing that certificate. It's as simple and as clear as daylight. They denied issuing that certificate. So the case at the court today, the um, PDP lawyers tried as much as possible to advance their case before the court. 
Yes. They try to argue that this fresh evidence has a link. There is a nexus between the evidence that is before the court and, you know, the documents that were tendered initially at the tribunal. But we saw the arguments and counter arguments of the other lawyers, which asked, you know, the court to throw away this evidence for, you know, lack of uh, merit or whatever the case might be. But the court, as of today, has reserved um, um, ruling on that evidence, meaning that um, on the day that they will be delivering judgment is when they will be giving their ruling on this evidence. So what Atiku's lawyers have successfully done is they have tendered, they have moved their motion in line with the document. So if the court is going to accept that motion, the court will go ahead to assess the documents or the fresh evidence and use it in determining the case. If, however, they are not going to accept those fresh evidence, they will simply throw it away and proceed to delivering judgment on the next day that the court will sit. Maxwell, thank you very much. As you did court today, sorry for the harassment where they give you uh, today for court. But before we continue, make we get some people who say they give interview for court uh, so that we'll come back for the and take more updates that are coming in. So let's uh, take a listen to people who were interviewed in the court, uh, especially people from um, the Labour Party. Let's take a listen. To know what the obviously the case is finished now, but the viewers globally are, are wanting to know what exactly happened inside the court. Well, well, it's a due process uh, uh, situation where all the um, appellants uh, uh, tendered their brief, um, adopted it, and uh, where there was a need, they did some adumbration. Of course, the respondent also uh, did uh, adopt their briefs uh, and also asked. Uh, during adumbration uh, for dismissal of the appeal. Uh, now it's up to the seven wise judges on the on the bench to go back and reflect on the merit of the issues that have been faced, um, that have been filed. It's a matter of uh, national interest. I think uh, the court is a court of law, but it's also a court of uh, policy. And we expect that um, the highest stake on this matter will be upholding the constitution of the Federal Republic. And I think that's what the issue is all about. So do, do you have an idea when that judgment, I mean, there's not going to be any other sitting, any other sitting is going to be the judgment proper. Yes. Do you have any idea when Nigerians uh, should be anticipating to have that uh, judgment? Delivered? No, I don't. They have not indicated, but I think going by the calendar and from what was said, they must uh, finish the process, I, I believe, by the 5th of November. Uh, so I think something is going to happen between now and then. I don't have an idea. I'm not curious as, as to what, you know, um, Okay, that's fine. Thanks very much. Uh, that's uh, uh, Mr. Henry Obaze. Oseloka Henry Obaze. Oseloka Henry Obaze. Yeah. Henry Obaze. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, that is one of the Labour Party's chieftain um, speaking at the Supreme Court today. So um, let's get back to the update on the um, uh, Labour Party and uh, P2B's uh, this thing. Let's give that update before we jump into the major issue I want us to discuss inside the studio, right? Get away. So the update on OB will try to be very, very um, uh, distant. And uh, we can see that um, Dr. Livio Zoku San standing in for LP, uh, you know, uh, urged the court to allow his client's appeal. He prayed uh, the court to set aside the judgment of the presidential election petition court in Abuja, which affirmed Tinubu's election. The Supreme Court reserved judgment on OBLP's appeal seeking to invalidate Tinubu's election. A date to the ruling will be communicated, meaning they are going to uh, give a date to that very particular thing. So, um, looking at that very uh, this very position let's come back to the to the studio to have a, a discussion on this very particular document that the chairman of um, this panel uh, justice Eyang okoro is talking about so um angel let's start with you before we get to uh, our own uc maxwell on zoom so let's start with you so you heard about what he said and uh, this very document which we are going to get in a short while and um, uh, let, let's hear your perception of what your thoughts are on these very particular documents that he's talking about. My own thing be say, na waiting samani do, na yin won do, na yin yang won do. 
Now, based on technicalities, because you can't tell me, say, the two things, they so glaring for your front. Now, let na Tinubu submit. I've been a certificate, na Tinubu submit to the INEC. That is the question. He cannot come with technicalities. Tunibu submitted fake certificate, not fake letter. The letter from the CSU is not what we are discussing. What we are discussing is the certificate, this fake certificate Tinubu submitted. That is what we are discussing. Because Tinubu did not submit letter from the CSU. No. Justice Inangokolo knows what he's doing. Because this is how Samani started it. We need to hit him so hard. Because he needs to judge this case based on constitution, not technicalities. Okay, Angel, thank you very much with that very one. Uh, make we get to Esther. Esther, so uh, you don't hear us, Angel, take talking on. And, uh, but for this very one, I understand, say, uh, we might we get the doc the documents will come up from CSU, you understand? And from our records where we get, we don't see any one where they talk about authenticating Tinubu's certificate. None at all. Which one on a talk finish you go present. Yeah. So make you tell me what you think, what in the day for the man mind. Well, anyway, it's it's very, very it's quite embarrassing and sad that Justice Iyang, a senior advocate of Nigeria, will make such embarrassing comments. Does it mean that they did not make their findings very well? Because these are documents that were sworn under the deposition of law. That means they carry, uh, uh, they carry a kind of weight. They are substantial evidence that was sworn, sworn under a uh, penalty of testament of uh, penalty and perjury. These are the foundational pillars of truth and justice. And the courtroom is a place of a, 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 a drama where you come and display one thing. We saw them when they, they've done it in the PEPT during the appeal court period. Now, they are, what kind of argument is that? Is he trying to raise an argument or is he trying to... Maybe he should go out to the street and ask a layman, the one he should or the one we are going to accept. You know, it's quite they, embarrassing. Okay, uh, problem, when they yeah. say that uh, there are two conflicting documents. That is my documents. problem. There is no letter in the first place. There's no two letters in the first place. There should no, it, it shouldn't even have been brought up in the first place. Because over the months, probably two, three months we've been talking about this, there is no letter that has indicated CSU sending it out to either Enahoro or any of the um, um, people that are applying for this, uh, this thing that there was that it is authenticating the certificate or saying that it is fake or it's saying that it's real. There is no letter of such. The only place that such was mentioned was in the deposition that he should be looking at and not in a letter. The only letter that is even visible that was brought out at one point was not even about authenticating or um, decrediting. He's just saying he attended. He, okay. he attended the school. He's not saying okay. that the certificate he gave is original. Do you okay. understand? Okay. So, uh, well, looking at it from my own uh, perspective, I will tell you uh, how we have followed this case diligently. First, one of the first letters that we received sometime last year was one letter that, um, uh, what is his name? This guy will get beer, beer like goats. Um, white beer, beer like that. Reno. Reno Macri. Yes. Yes, Reno Mokri, where in come out, show himself, say in Waka enter CSU. Yes, yes. Then come give a one letter where <laughs> they talk, say Tunubu graduated Rated, from yes. Chicago State University. You understand? Yes. That is the first one to whom it may concern. Then that very letter surface again, where they give uh, a Naho Reba, yeah. Mike a Naho Reba, through Sopina. Mm -hmm. Then come give them the same document again. To whom it may concern, say Tinubu graduated this thing. And that letter was dated 27th day of June mm -hmm. 2022. You understand me? Yes. Now, that same letter, they call it a stock letter on the deposition. That is the only letter. And what that letter was talking about is about whether Tinubu attended Chicago State University. Yeah. And 
the grave constitutional issues that they were discussing today in the Supreme Court is not whether Tinubu attended Chicago State University. It was about a certificate forgery. Exactly. Yeah. And this very letter in no way authenticates that certificate. You understand? Yes. Yeah. What this uh, uh, letter has done is authenticate that Tinubu did attend yeah. Chicago State University and stated his graduation periods without authenticating the certificate which is in question. Yeah. So, and I am very much aware that this justice, uh, Ian, okay, as we can see it on the screen now, you will see that this is the letter and it is CXU 00, I think 15 on the deposition as presented by um, by the CSU uh, court documents in the US. Now, he said to whom it may concern, let me read it out. Please be advised that Bola A. Tinubu attended Chicago State University. Did you hear this? Attended Chicago State University. He never said this is to certify yeah. that uh, a, a certificate was given to Tinubu. You understand? Yeah. This is to say that this person attended Chicago State University from August 1977 to June 1979. He was awarded a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration with Honors on June 22nd, 1979. His major was Accounting, respectfully, Caleb Westback. That is a registrar. Now, let's take you back immediately so that we don't kill time. Let's take you to the deposition of this Keller Westberg who signed this very particular document. Now, on, that is in October 3rd of this year, which are just a few days ago. This is page 43. Anybody who had a certified version of this very affidavit, should please go to page 43. That's why it's on the screen. And the question comes like this by Miss Liu, who happens to be um, uh, Atiku's um, oh, yeah. lawyer. Oh, yeah. And he said, the question is, let, it starts with, I will refresh it. So, CSU did not issue the INEC diploma to President Tinubu in 1979, correct? Now, there was objection because it has been asked before and he has answered that they did not. But the witness said no, not in 1979. And Miss Liu said, okay, so as we go up from this very question, at uh, this very place, um, we now see that uh, the question again said, Mr. Westberg, I'm handing you what has been marked as Exhibit 7. It is a letter from CSU dated June 27th, 2023. That is just the letter we have just shown you. Do you recognize that document? The answer is I do. Then the question again, this is a stock letter for anyone who had requested Mr. Tinubu's records. That's the question. And the answer is yes. And when he said the answer, he said, did you draft this letter? And he said, yes, I did. Question again, did anyone else help to prepare you in drafting this letter? He said, no. And was CSU counsel involved at this point? The answer, I don't recall. Do you recall CSU's outside counsel was involved at this very point? Trying to get things out. He said, I don't think so. Question. And no one else was, I mean, anyone else involved in drafting this letter? The answer is no. He said, about 20 years ago, we received similar requests and a past registrar named Lois David looked into the matter and drafted a more or less identical letter at that time as well. So, 20 years ago, you received similar requests about Mr. Tinubu's records. Answer, that's correct. And Lois Davis was the registrar then. She was. And he said, and she wrote a stock letter similar to this 
That is exhibit 7. He said yes. And you don't have a record of that in your possession? The answer is no. And there is no record of Lois Davis' letter in CSU possession? He said yes, we have a copy of the letter. And that is in Mr. Tinubu's files? He said no. Where would that be then? He said somewhere in our office, probably in my office at present. Just like sit sitting on your desk or where? The answer is, when these matters arise and we have to do checking on things, we look up what we have available to us and this was found. So, where was it found? One of my staff members brought it to me. Question, was that in electronic form? Answer, yes, a scanned copy. And so you took Miss Davis' letter and just made an identical letter in 2022. The answer is, after verification of the records to ensure that it was accurate, yes. And what did you do to verify? I looked up the student record, anything else, nothing else. Now let's get back to studio so that uh, we understand this. First, Angel and my people here, we understand that this very letter, they call it a stock letter. It is a letter that emanated somebody called Lois, who was a registrar 20 years ago, designed this letter to whom it may concern, to suggest that Tinubu attended the school. So when the pressure becomes so much this time with people asking all sorts of questions, Caleb Westback decided to use a template used 20 years ago to do another letter. And that very letter is very specific on that Tunubu attended Chicago State University. I believe sincerely that the reason why uh, Atiku is bringing up this very particular evidence, new evidence in court, is not whether Tinubu attended Chicago State University, yeah. but rather his whole claim is forgery, yes. which is that uh, that uh, um, that the certificate he submitted to INEC, INEC. is it's this. Fake. You understand me? It's fake, yes. We can even see some exclamations that are on the screen from Ms. Pierce. Kudos to her. He said, Justice John Okoro said he doesn't know which document should be acceptable between the letter from Chicago State University and the deposition done under oath. Something even a rookie lawyer would know. Oga John how much is the money that they paid you? But anyway, let's get to Maxwell. Let's hope uh, Maxwell is still there on Zoom so that um, he can take up with this very particular one, uh, which, which one is, has a, a higher. So Maxwell, if you are listening to me, please. My question is, if you have a document, if you are a Supreme Court justice, who probably would have been in the Supreme Court or through the judicial system in the last 15 years at least, and you are presented with a letter that is coming, certifying attendance of um, attending school at CSU, can you really classify that document to be a, a, a document uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is authenticating one's uh, certificate at the school. That's one. Then the second question I want to ask you is, how would you also deem a letter, and, or, or rather, uh, uh, how would you weigh a letter from CSU versus a deposition that was conducted with admissions of an oath? in the United States. So these are the two questions I want you to quickly, please, uh, give us your analysis on that. I am, I am very bothered that we are still having this kind of issues in today's world and with the kind of legal system that we practice in Nigeria. I've always said it, that whatever is going on in Chicago um, State, with Chicago State University, whatever is going on with Atiku, whatever is going on with Tunubu, and the presidential election petition tribunal, and now the Supreme Court, must be founded on the provisions of the law. When you look at the initial petition of Atiku, because you would agree with me that it is Atiku that brought up the issue of forgery. When you look at the initial petition of Atiku, 
it is founded on the fact that Bola Tinubu should be disqualified. And on what grounds? Because he violated the provisions of section 137, subsection 1, paragraph J. And the question is, what does that provision of the constitution say? Very simple. It says that a person cannot become president, cannot hold the office of president, if he, uh, if he has forged and presented a forged certificate to INEC. It is as clear as daylight. What we see now is an attempt to mislead the general public. What we see by these courts and by these lawyers who are arguing on behalf of Tunubu is an attempt to create a fresh issue. The issue remains, the Bola Tinubu present a forged certificate to INEC. So let us now move to the CSU deposition and the letter. The question of the constitution under section 137 is not asking whether the candidate attended school or not. It is not asking whether the candidate went to university or not, whether he wrote attendance in the university or not. The constitution is simply asking, did he present a document that is forged? And there is no need whatsoever by, for the court to refer to a letter that is affirming a person's attendance in a school. Now, by our constitution, Mr. Khan, you don't even need to pass examination. Once you have a certificate from secondary school, it is enough for you. To, it means that if I write YEC and I fail, once I have that certificate, it shows that it is enough for me to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So what the framers of the constitution envisage is that they don't want a certificate forger to be president. And there is no need referring to a letter that is affirming attendance and then leaving a deposition that is showing forgery. So the deposition is saying that this certificate bulletin group presented, we did not issue it. We did not certify it. We don't know this document. We did not make this document. We did not sign this document. We don't know where Bola Tinubu got this document from. What it means is that Bola Tinubu who submitted this document, and I've said it time and time again that the most verifiable means of proving forgery is for the issuing authority to say, I did not issue. And Chicago State University have come out and say, I did not issue this certificate. It means the certificate that Bola Tinubu issued to INEC was forged. And by virtue of section 137, subsection 1, paragraph G, he should not be president. So this entire rigma rule by the judiciary, by lawyers, by APC meetwits and, you know, people who are just considered, they only look at money before coming out to speak, they are trying to twist the issue whether Bola Tinubu attended school or not. That is not the question. The question is that, did he present a false certificate? And the court must look at it on that basis. So the letter should not even be an evidence before the court. It, it is not even tenable. What is tenable is the deposition to show if indeed he issued or he presented a false certificate. So your second question, um, what was your second question about again? Sorry. Has to deal with uh, the, the letter against that is the letter against the deposition on oath. You know, he is saying that they don't know which one to take. Is it to take the letter that came there or to take the deposition on right. oath? All right. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Khan. These issues are just issues. These, these are elementary issues. Nobody stops you from tendering evidence before the court. But the court needs to know whether those evidences are admissible. And apart from admissibility, you need to know if those documents are relevant. These are very, very important questions that should be answered. The letter, is it relevant to the issue? The letter only proves attendance and does not certify the certificate. So the, the, the letter should not even be a resource of the court. What the court should be looking at is what did the deposition say? Did the deposition say this document was forged or it wasn't forged? And the deposition would agree with me say that this document is forged. So this entire drama that we are seeing is an attempt to perpetrate injustice on the Nigerian people. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I like the way, way you explain and to our people made them understand say 
these people, um, uh, Justice Iyang Okoro, if you they watch us now, make you know, say who they read the constitution, and we know they're stupid. Uh, we, uh, I, or should I talk how that uh, CNN woman talk? How stupid do you think we are? And that's what the woman <laughs> think asks. How stupid do you think we are? But anyway, sure. Uh, other people will be saying on that day, make on a for joy, make on a make on a comment. Person where they the level of justice, Okoro, suppose no whether uh, the letter where they talk who, to whom it may concern, there was not even certified in the first place. How will you compare that to a court order deposition that was administered under oath? How you go begin to compare them? I be you don't begin the one go uh, into technicalities as our own UC Max so uh, take talk. Make on a make on our own comments for, for our comment section. Make people for understand. Make they know how on a take feel. And again, before we continue, because we get other small things, so we say we go bring before uh, we go go. So I want to make we hear uh, one of the interviews that we are taking at the Supreme Court um, today. Quickly, let's take up that uh, just in a moment. We'll come back with we'll another thing. A, a perspective from you. Um, what obviously you are with him in court. What actually happened in court? Well. Were you not in the court? No, we weren't allowed inside the court. Uh, well, so you tell us what happened. Just in summary. Yes. Everybody, APC, Labour Party, and I presented their cases. Yeah. And uh, we we're all happy based on our presentations from our lawyers. And uh, in summary, we are waiting. And the victory is ours, inshallah. So since we are not in court, please, uh, pardon me to ask this question. Yeah. Uh, there was this issue of uh, the PDP uh, bringing more um, evidence. Was well, that evidence admitted today? Are you aware? Well, I don't think it was 100% admitted. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So as the no green make uh, some of the lawyers will be saying and forgive us really information of what they uh, ended up with uh, today. Whether they tell the same they no talk to press, we no know, but that's why we they take uh, some of them. So by our time, don't they give us signal now? And signal where then they give us be say make we for quickly do quick begin the go. But we get one uh, tweet where they come out from Jackson Ude. And he said, update uh, the Supreme Court election panel to deliver judgment on Thursday, November 2nd, uh, concludes conference. Now, so Jackson, who they take talk. Uh, this one just the end, and now we say, make we share and with one. And if you go see the comments and other things, we'll be say they there. He said, the panel of seven justices of the Supreme Court hearing the election petitions of Atiku Abubakar and PDP and P2B of the LP concluded conference on the matter and agreed to deliver judgment on Thursday, November 2nd, 2020. The official told me, now the justices had earlier today heard arguments from the PDP and LP candidate after which they reserved judgment, dismissing the petition of the APM. Nigerians are anxiously waiting to see if the justices would uphold the sham um, election that brought uh, Bola Tinubu, who had forged his certificate and rigged himself. The post has been adjusted to reflect the new info. Well, now, so Jackson, who they take talk, I will never verify. No, we talk to the person where we say they do Supreme Court when talk say talk to Ram. Now, you get the source, but our own, I make we for the bring that because some things. What do you think say no be true then talk? Uh, you go see say not true. So, as our time don't give us signal, I go tell on our one thing.